What's up, everybody? Circus here coming at you with a, well, what is this? An educational video, Herf? And not the kind yeah. that you were hoping for. <laughs> Herf is like, is this health class? I always what? show up for health class. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? Dude, I'm a grown man. I don't want to go to health class anymore. <laughs> All right, so uh, we thought it'd be fun to do a video on the hourglass and delays. We've done one before, but it's kind of out of date. Uh, so we wanted to do that. And this is really good for people that are just picking up the game um, mm -hmm. that might not know what this is or e if that it's even a thing. So you want to go over yeah. it a little bit, Herf? Yeah, so basically this is a trick that every single competitive player that's good. So like if you see anybody who wins an MCS or wins a damage step or wins, you know, team wars, whatever, they all know this trick and new players have absolutely zero clue, Okay. So what it is, is that there's an hourglass right at the top of the screen when you're doing a duel. duel and yep. basically what that says is it gives you an indicator on who's thinking, if that makes sense. Like whose turn it is I'm to make I'm always a thinking, dude. So like because uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! in general is a turn-based, like priority-based you know, thing. So I get to make an action, you get to make an action. Right. The hourglass will tell you whenever your opponent – has the opportunity to do an action even if so, their toggle is off right yeah so even if the toggle is off real quick think, why, oh, why don't you explain the toggle too because like a lot of people have no idea that what the toggle does yeah so basically uh your game is set to default to like auto right so what that means is the game will just give you the opportunity to do something if it thinks you should be doing it. Like right? it's an opportune time to activate yeah. that card or effect. But the reason why you use the toggle button is because it allows you to activate stuff whenever you want. So when your toggle is on, it will stop the game every single time you have the possible opportunity to do something and say, hey, do you want to do this? Hey, do you want to do this? You just drew a card. Do you want to do this? Hey, it's standby phase. Do you want to do this? No, oh, some you just summon a monster. You want to do this? Some cards like quick plays can activate almost constantly throughout the, the turn, where yeah. something like uh, Wall of Disruption, it can only mm -hmm. activate during a very narrow window. So it yeah. won't ask you repeatedly on Wall of Disruption, but like something uh, that's yeah, a quick like Book play. Book of Moon or Cosmic Cyclone. Right, so. it's going to ask you a lot more often. Yeah, so people use... So a lot of times people put toggle to off if they don't want their opponent to know that they have like a disruption when they're doing their plays or whatever. Because you'll feel but, that, that delay, because they'll be like, Herf, yeah. you know, Circus has set a card. Do you have a response? You know, and you'll feel yeah. that, that quick little delay. So they'll turn their toggle off to make that delay disappear. But the hourglass still flickers because the game in its head is like, oh, do you want to do it? But then they're like, oh, wait, he doesn't want us to ask, so we won't ask. But it still flickers. The hourglass the at the top will still flicker. So you yeah. can always read your opponent. Mm hmm and basically, we're going to be going through a couple scenarios that, uh, you know, popular scenarios with a popular deck. We're playing, um, you know, Harpies versus Yosenjus of myself drawing cards that show delays and basically how to, like, how to read that. Now, remember, there are hundreds of cards, thousands of cards in the game. There are thousands of scenarios. We just picked a couple just to show uh, how it works. So just remember, mm -hmm. there are so many different scenarios. There's so many different cards on the ladder. I mean... Uh, but what it comes down to is uh, kind of narrowing down what your opponent might have is what it mm -hmm. comes to. So yeah, you can kind of figure out what they may or may not have. Yeah, because most decks stick to a pretty confined deck list, right? MSTs, Book of Moons, Kanadia, stuff like that. So if you have a face-up monster on the field, it's probably going to be something to flip that face down, like flip that monster face down. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, and we go over that in the scenario. So why don't we uh, go over into the, the battle arena, Herf. We'll go into the... <laughs> Into dual links now. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is us transitioning. Okay, so Herf has gone first. He's got one hell of a board with harpies here. He's got two monsters on the field and three back row. Now he's going to end his turn, and we're going to keep an eye on that hourglass when we go into the draw phase here. And that did flicker. There was a mm -hmm. flicker. So. That tells me right now some of those cards are activatable. At least one of my backers is live. So let, let's talk about what the scenarios could be here, Herb. So there's two monsters on the field, so there could be a Tretch, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a Tretch can pop with two monsters. And it doesn't have to be your opponents. Um, correct. It could be a Book of Moon. 
because there Correct. is um, a face-up monster. Again, doesn't have to be your opponents. Or it could be a mystical space typhoon or a cosmic cyclone, right? Because you can take mm -hmm. out your own back row. And uh, it could be a uh, swallow's nest because you can. Right. That activates when you have a monster on the field. All right. So we're going to summon into this and see what it is. I'm going to say yes. Can you feel that delay again? Yeah. There was a slight delay because it was asking Herf if he wanted to do something. There it is again. It's asking him again. I, I feel like we're going to get treached here really bad. Book of Moon, okay. Book of Moon. No, not that one. I need that one. <laughs> Get Rex son. Well, okay, so. Question. What else did you have set? So there was a Book uh, of Moon. MST one. and Swallow's Nest. Okay. All right, so we I guess two out of the three, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's try a different scenario. All right, so another scenario we have here is I, I went first, I set a couple back row, and then I'm going to pass the turn back over to Herf here. And if you watch, in his draw phase, we're going to see a flicker of the hourglass. And that tells me he has something in his hand that was activatable in the draw or standby phase. So that means it has to be a quick play spell. Mm -hmm. And since there are only back row on the field, it has to be back row removal. Right. So... Because I do have cosmic, and so that you know that would be right. So basically, when you don't, when your opponent draws, you always want to be watching in the uh, in the standby or draw and standby phase because that'll tell you if they have any quick play spells. So like if you if circus like just had monsters and then there was a delay, um, it could be like a book of moon as well. Right, right. Yeah. I have a field spell, so I technically I could cosmic my own field spell, but the idea is still the same, right? So that if you have or like on summon, here watch, so on summon, okay, if Circus had anything, which I do, yeah, so you can activate it, just him activating it will tell him that I have a quick play because there's a delay now that I have a monster on the field, right, because it's so asking now that me. I have a monster on the field and I have a quick play, it has to be a Swallow's Nest or a Book of Moon, right, so just always watching the Hourglass to know whether or not they have any quick plays. It'll show you in the draw standby whenever they do literally anything. Uh, yeah, so just keep watching it. All right, let's get back to the studio. All right, so we're back in the studio here, the DLE Studios. Um, so you saw what we were doing there a little bit. I hope it helps you guys out. Like I said before we got started, there are so many different scenarios and so many different cards, but if you can just start to learn um, that the hourglass exists, it's going to flicker. And then when you run into a deck, you know, more than likely they're going to be running the popular cards. Someone's mm -hmm. always going to hit you with a one of or something crazy you didn't expect. But uh, just knowing, is there a quick play? Is it, you know, is it activatable? Is it not activatable? That should really help you uh, improve your game a lot. Yeah. I mean, I don't have much to add. You, you did a pretty good job with that. Oh, my God. Well, that's, that's, that that's beautiful. That's why I'm here, man. You know what I mean? But yeah, just uh, just become big brain. Yep. That's, the, that's the advice I have for you. Yep, so hopefully as a new player you got a little something out of this uh, and then you can use it to get better at Yu-Gi-Oh! And then you don't have to sit and say, this deck needs to be nerfed! Because you'll just know how to beat it. You know what hey, I mean? Let's go. Just that, beat it, forehead. That's right. Herp is good at just beating it. Oh, that took you a little bit, didn't it? That took you a little bit. Oh All right, God. we're going to get out of here, but you should get in the Discord because it's free, the terms are free, and the new player help is free. Let's go. I'm Circus. That's Hoif. See you. And we'll see you next time.